Got an OC from an old park ranger that my family knows. Guy does a lot of backwoods rescue stuff too. Fucked up suicides are his worst, but those are other stories. After some beers, we asked him what the most creeped out he's ever been. In upper New York, doing some midwinter patrols around the lakes. Lots of cabins are waterfront, so easiest way to do the rounds is to drive a snowmobile on the lake. We'd just stay at ranger cabins along the way, so he would be out for days at a time. Driving along on the lake, cold as fuck. See something out of the corner of his eye. A bunch of red on the ice. Drive over and see a pool of frozen blood near the edge of the lake. Blood goes over to the edge of the lake towards a cliff face. Says it was at nearly 100 feet straight up. Nearly flat surface. Extra what the fuck. Drive a snowmobile to where the cliff winds down. Parks. Grabs his rifle. Starts hiking up. Takes a few minutes of hiking till he gets close to where the blood trail reached the cliff edge. Finds a deer ripped to shreds, eviscerated, guts out, flesh chewed up. Not at all like how most predators do it. No way a bear could climb the cliff. A cougar isn't strong enough to carry a whole deer this far up on a flat snowy rock face. Sees a bunch of prints on the ground, but couldn't recognize them. Touches the corpse, realizes it's still a bit warm, says that he froze on the spot, and realization hit that the animal hasn't been dead that long. Whatever killed and ate this thing is still nearby, and was likely hiding nearby after hearing a snowmobile. Says he took his rifle off of his back and carefully made his way back down to a snowmobile. Whole time, he said he felt like something was watching him, and he kept glancing around, expecting something to blindside him. Gets on a snowmobile, drives the fuck out. Says he still has no clue what could have done it. This involves woods, but the woods aren't really relevant, to be honest. Hang around woods with friends. Have this little area that we sit in to get high. Have a drink. Have a fire. That kind of thing. Meet two friends there one day. New chair has been introduced, which is a lot better than the logs and crates that we normally use. It's this high back comfy cushion chair. Ask where it came from. Friend found it outside an old folks home. Immediately think that someone could have died in it and tell them that we should get rid of it. Friend who got it insists that I try it out first. Reluctantly sit in it. Yeah, yeah, it's comfy. Everything just starts feeling odd. Like they're both talking to me, but it's all muffled and I have tunnel vision get overwhelming sense of dread and no energy. You know when you wake up and you're still really tired and you have to physically drag yourself out of bed? I have to do that to get out of the chair. Both of them ask me if I felt it. Whatever it is, I did. Friend who got it thinks it's cool. Other friend agrees with me that we should get rid of it. Chair stays. At the weekend, there's eight of us. Friend insists everyone try the chair. Everyone does, except one. They all have this real trance look to them when they're sitting in it. It's weird as fuck. All feeling it, but don't seem concerned. Following day, me and friend who want to get rid of it go there alone and have a fire. Decide to burn the chair. We assure ourselves it's a good thing because it's cursed. Everyone had bad luck in the space of maybe two to three months after it. Of the eight of us that were there that night, Five went to prison, one died in a car accident, one killed themselves, and one had a miscarriage. Only one who nothing happened to was the one who didn't sit in it. To this day, I still stand by that decision to burn it. Coincidence? Probably. I still fucking hated it though. I have three mildly weird things happen lately outside the place I'm living. Decided to share and see what you guys think. And since this is what X is for, I live on first floor. Landlord lives on second floor. I've lived there for about two and a half years. I enter and exit from a door on the backyard side, and my bedroom window faces the backyard. Last weekend, I was up late playing video games, go out periodically to smoke cigarettes, go out at some point when it was dark. Kind of hard to explain the way the property is arranged. It has a longer driveway than the houses next to it, so our backyard and side yard kind of go behind the backyard of the house next to us, which does have a fence. 
and our backyard is actually touching the backyard of the house two doors down, which I guess is also further back from the road than the other properties, and is not separated by a fence. So, anyone can walk through if they wanted. There are some kind of wooded areas to the left and right of our backyard, but behind the backyard is just a row of houses on the parallel street. So, not like we're facing the wilderness or anything. Anyway, I'm out back at night smoking a cigarette, and I hear the sound of something moving in the leaves in the line of trees separating the yards. Think nothing of it because we get deer all the time. As I'm beginning to go in, and just as I put my hand on the door handle, I realize it doesn't sound like a deer. It sounds like how a person would walk. So I stand there and watch as I hear the walking in a large gap between the trees. I clearly see the silhouette of a person walking in a neighbor's yard right beside the trees in the direction of their house. Stand there for a moment. He's not in my view anymore. And then a moment later, the walking stops. Rationalize that it's probably just a neighbor doing some shit in his yard, and that that's all it may have been, and I go back inside. Hear the dog barking in the fenced yard of the house that's closer to the road, like the person continued walking along the edge of the other neighbor's property. Next day, see my landlord picking up sticks in the backyard and ask if it was him, and he looks straight at me and slowly shakes my head. Shouldn't that say sh slowly shakes his head? What the fuck? <laughs> he just took my head and started shaking it. Explain what happened. And he just says, that's fucking weird. The next thing isn't really that weird, but I have to mention it. Wake up at like 4.30 a.m. to the sounds of some kind of moaning animals coming from what sounded like right outside my bedroom window. Thought I was hallucinating it in my waking state, but I recorded some of it. Sounded like moaning with an occasional cat-like screeching. Thought I could hear two animals at the same time. Maybe two cats, or a cat and a raccoon, or a possum or something. Anyway, not that weird in hindsight, but it spooked me at the time. Last thing, I just got home from work. It was night. Happened to see my landlord out front, and he asked if I could turn off the hose in the backyard before I went in. So I went in back, turned off the hose, and started smoking a cigarette. Heard some rustling in the same line of trees, but I thought it just sounded like a small animal. Then, suddenly, a patio chair on the far side of the patio table falls over for seemingly no reason, which has never happened in my time of living there. Get spooked and decided to turn to X as I'm typing this. I think maybe it has something to do with the hose that had been running. So I just went back out and look and see that, indeed, the hose had been draped over it. So, I guess for some physics or friction or probability reason, the chair just happened to fall over about a minute after turning off the hose that was draped over it. But I typed out all of this, so I may as well post it. Anyway, only other weird things that happened here. Had the day off, so I went to see Wrath of Khan, which was screening in theaters for its anniversary. Stop at a store on the way home to buy some shirts and decide to buy a scented candle. At night, light the candle for a bit, then stupidly blow it out instead of snuffing it out, and the wax goes everywhere. Clean it up as best as I can with many paper towels. That stuff wasn't really relevant, but I think they're fun details. Take garbage out since they're collecting the next day. The driveway is on the opposite side of the house as the incident with the silhouette behind the line of trees. The neighbors on that side had moved in only recently. There are trees between our houses on this side too, a little thicker. As I'm walking down our long driveway, I see two figures walking up along the side of that neighbor's house, one of whom has a flashlight. Figure that maybe they dropped something and were looking for it. A little after I pass them, the flashlight is pointed towards me. I turn around and they're both facing me, walking toward me slightly, but from the other side of the tree still. One of them says what sounds like, you giggling a little? I say kind of indignantly. What? Then turn around and keep walking. They take their flashlight off of me, and when I get to the road, I see a cop car parked at the curb. No one is in it, but the lights on top are flashing. Toss the garbage in the bin, walking back up the driveway. I think the two guys were standing in the back of the neighbor's house and go inside, and that's that. Another time, 
I happened to walk out back at night and see a row of evenly spaced lights moving slowly across the sky. Watched them for a bit, then ran inside to grab my phone. But when I went back out, they had already passed out of sight. Did a Google search and found that SpaceX had launched a bunch of satellites that might be visible in the night sky and were described as just what I had seen. Not paranormal, but yeah, pretty weird coincidence that I saw them at just the right time. That's all I got. Well, that's all he got. Be me, around 10 p.m. Just got home from getting ice cream at McDonald's. About to watch some Malcolm in the Middle. Friend calls me on Discord. Ignore it. Message him back. What? I think I just saw a fucking cryptid. Immediately call him back. Said he was driving back from work with his high beams on. When he was turning, they glanced a small clearing in the woods near his house, revealing a tall, pale, whitish gray skinned humanoid figure on all fours. Said it turned to look at him. He noped the fuck out and peeled out of there. Ask him how tall. Uh, maybe eight feet. But, dude, this is two minutes from my house. Tell him he has to get inside and tell his dad. Maybe call the cops. He says okay. Gets out of the car. Me still on call. Says he hears screaming from the woods. Tell him to fucking book it to the house. Hangs up. Messages me a few minutes later, saying that his brother and some friends saw it a few nights ago. Went chasing into the woods with machetes. Ask him when I can come over. As two days ago, I had stated on our Discord server that we should go UFO or cryptid hunting. Pick related. Said it was less thin and the face was less humanoid. Also, probably not as tall or extended like that if I had to guess. I saw something similar over a decade ago. I live in the middle of nowhere in Appalachia, surrounded on all sides by forest. I have what is now a hayfield. Back then, we used to grow corn every season. The field is not a simple rectangular field, but rather, it weaves in and out of the forest, resulting in some thickets of the forest that jut out into the field. Attached at the far end of the field is the only other open space in the area, which is a cow pasture roughly the same size as, or even a bit bigger, than the field out back. Every day when I got out of school, I would meander around in the woods and in these two fields. The cow pasture had this one tall hill that the wind always blew on, making it a great place to swing my sword and practice form. One day, I was headed up to the hill to practice, and there was this awful, disgusting stench permeating the area. It reeked of feces and rotten meat, as if an animal had been laying out in the sun, dead for a week. The smell was not there the day before, but being brought up in the woods, I didn't think much of it. It's similar to the smell of when you step into a ripe carcass if you've ever had the misfortune. I hopped the fence and went up to the top of the hill to my normal spot, and I practiced my lunges and guards for a bit, but the smell was very distracting. And so, I headed back home soon after arriving. On the way back home, I walked along the edge of the woods, looking over the field. The crop had already been harvested at this time, so the field was just a bunch of chopped stalks sticking maybe eight inches high from the ground in the edge of the woods on the other side of the field. I saw this thing. It was clearly humanoid in shape, but it had ashy gray skin. It seemed to be kind of short, and it was very skinny. The thing turned to look at me twice, as though doing a double take. Both times, it glanced at me, and I could see that it had no lower jaw. I stood there, sort of gobsmacked for a minute, and I watched it. The creature was completely nude, but it didn't seem to have any features aside from its face. Its face was jawless, and it had no nose, sort of as if the meat and bone were just never there at all. After watching it fool around for a couple minutes, it approached a tall pine tree, one that was good two feet in diameter, and shoved it down. When the tree fell, I got out of there as fast as fucking possible. The root of the tree is still there, but it's mostly withered away into mulch. Just a year or two ago, I was headed back out into the field to clear some overgrowth, and I smelled that awful stench again. I didn't stick around to see if that thing was out there again, and I don't want to know. Pick related is sort of what this thing looked like. This creature was not the only thing I've seen, but it's certainly pertinent to this thread. 
There are still many things lurking around Appalachia. I've seen dogmen twice, a hawking pitch black man-shaped figure, strange lights in the trees, and I have heard voices out there. The Thing at the Airport On a warm June night in 2004, I went on a walk with my friend, Matt. We'd recently graduated, and we were getting as much time to hang out as possible before he left for the Air Force in the fall. These late night walks were our thing. We would reminisce, talk about girls, our problems, which were mostly with girls, and our goals. Best friend kind of stuff. Our small mountain town had great walking roads, but Orchard Road was our preferred choice. Long and shaped like a horseshoe, Orchard looped around our local airport. The outer sides were apple and pear trees. The inside of the straight stretches were rows of pine trees, but the inside of the loop was a field, and at its center was the airport's runway. We talked about high school the way old men do, laughing and bragging about the conquests of the past. Our glory days were behind us, despite graduating two days ago. We were now adults. We rounded the corner past the last row of trees and looked out onto the field. Our conversation died, and we looked over at the field of the dark swaying grass to the bright lights of the runway as they blinked in blue, red, and green. The crickets chirped, and then they stopped all at once. I remember Matt looking at me and asking, You feel okay? I shook my head. No, I feel weird. Off, kinda. Me too. A sharp metallic screech, like microphone feedback, pierced the night, and we grabbed our ears. They hurt. The hell was that? Matt said. I shrugged. We scanned the sky, thinking maybe a plane had something to do with it. We were outside an airport, so it made sense to me. Matt elbowed my shoulder and pointed to the field. Dude, look. A man stood at the edge of the runway, backlit by the colorful blinking lights. His body was short but thin, like he'd been smaller at one point and then stretched. He didn't look human. We panicked and ran. The man watched us but didn't move. It wasn't until we'd made it to the other side of the tree line that we realized, in our haste, we ran forward instead of back. We had gone the wrong direction. To get home, we would have to turn around and pass the field again. Matt and I gathered ourselves, then headed back towards the field. The man was gone, which made us even more nervous. He had to be around here somewhere, we reasoned. A car passed, and as it did, the figure rose from the grass, illuminated by the rear lights of the vehicle. Our view of its face was brief, but we both noticed the eyes. Huge, white circular orbs, dyed red by the car's taillights. It watched us as we eased past. Then, without a sound or disturbing the grass, it stepped from the field and onto the road towards us. We screamed and ran, and didn't look back until we were home. Didn't happen to me personally, but I remember reading about this. Back around 1975, when I was nine, some of the kids I knocked around with insisted that we all pile into the nearest phone box to hear a spooky message. By dialing a number, I think it was made up of zeros, twos, and ones, and without needing to insert two pence, a woman, speaking in a curiously monotone voice, could be heard saying, help me, help me, Susan's dying over and over. Some of the lads said that she sometimes said, Susie's drowning, but it was always in the same slow, seemingly bored tone of voice. Was it some weird engineer's test signal? Hence, no money was needed. I remember the spooky message when I was a child playing with the old red phone boxes in Burnley. Two phone boxes in particular were prone to mysterious, scary voice messages. One at the top of Dalton Street on Plain Tree Estate, and the other at the end of Harold Street on Stoops Estate. As I remember, you put two pence in the slot and dialed 20202020, and the voice on the other end would be crackly but audible. Help me, Susie's dying, which would send us kids running in all directions. I am from Burnley and I have a vivid memory of the strange phone message. In either 1980 or 1981, Three other girls and myself were loitering with the intent not to go back to school after lunch. We were messing around in a phone box near to school, calling random numbers and talking rubbish if anyone answered. 
we thought it was funny. One of the girls said that she knew a number that you could call to hear a spooky message. I think there were threes and twos in it. When she called this number, we all heard the message as quoted in previous correspondence. I have no doubts as to the phrasing of what I heard. It was a clear voice with no audible distortion. Needless to say, we were all freaked out a bit by this. And when a British telecom van pulled up nearby, we made a hasty retreat and returned to school. Be me, 15 year old Albertan, live in small town, kinda out of shape, but getting into shape. Start going for runs, out one night. It's pretty dark, decide to go for a longer run, out in this field, jump barbed wire into another field, start feeling uneasy, remember something I had been told about the field I'm in. Some girl's corpse was discovered, stuffed in a couch in the field in the 1980s. Lots of old ruins here as well. Pioneer house that's somehow still standing. Get creeped out. Decide to be brave and not run too fast. Out of the corner of my eye, I catch something in the window of the house. It darts back in. Figure it was an animal, but speed up. I keep running for a bit and glance past. An arm slides out from behind the house. Very white, but sickly white. Elbows are in the wrong place. I start sprinting like hell. Look behind me again. This thing is running towards me with jerky motions. It was all elongated and fucked up. Naked, pale white skin, covered in sores. Its face was the worst. The eyes were like human eyes, turned 90 degrees and bigger, and they were pitch black. No nose. Massive mouth with red lips, and rows of sharp teeth opened in an O. I'm fucking sprinting as fast as I can, hitting fucking parkour moves, but it's catching up. Up ahead is an old church, still in use, but dilapidated. I vault the fence over the line, and the thing tries to jump it, but it shrieks when it passes the property line. It stares at me and lumbers off. I got a friend to come pick me up, and I made it home. Still live in the area, thinking of hunting it. Does anyone know what it could be? Hello, X. I hope you're having a nice day. So the whole reason for this thread is because half of this lame board is just something something Jews and succubi. So in this thread, you can share, reply, and interact with your favorite scary stories. Everything is welcomed. Personal stories, famous or unknown tales, green text or normal. And if it's fake, try to at least make it sound reasonable. Here's mine. Be me. Some years ago, be hanging out with friend after a disastrous bowling multi date. We're both bored and disappointed at the mall. He lives somewhat close. I live a little bit more far away. Want to go to my house? We can leave you at yours later. Pretty good deal, dot JPEG. After a little walk at friend's house, greeted by his mom, stepdad, bro, and sis, they show me around. At Big Bro's room, they joke about if I want to sleep there to meet some old fuck whose name I can't remember. What the fuck that PNG? Then, my friend starts explaining that he was like the previous owner's dad and that he still lives there. Then they all talk about how this dude is known for scaring specifically men while sleeping. Big bro goes on and says, yeah, actually, the first night I stayed here, I had eight sleeping paralysis with nightmares. He has like some big job event the next morning, so he actually booked at a hotel because of how shitty sleep can be at this room. Friend confirms this and tells me the same happened to him, but 12 paralysis. Then they say that this entity doesn't scare women in the same way. What do you mean, Dot Rar? They go on how women can actually have a good sleep at the room, but when they're left alone in there, they have hallucinations and breakdowns. Big Bro says he once invited a girlfriend over, and she was in his room while everyone was outside. And to put you into context, this house isn't very tall, so you could clearly see what happened in the windows. Then, he explains how, out of nowhere, she started to cry her eyeballs out, but couldn't move. Sister came quickly to the room to see what happened, and girlfriend broke down explaining how she saw something that was scaring her, but couldn't describe it. At this point, I was intrigued, but we had to leave because it was somewhat late. In the car, they told me more interesting stories that my friend's family had. Anything ranging from another entity living with his mom, to how the mirror keeps falling with no reason to. I suck at green texts and also terrible at English, but 
Here goes. Be me, 10 to 11 years old, in the woods with my dad, staying in my grandmother's vacation home. Not really a home, just a small train cart that was dropped on some land that she owned. The cart was upgraded, fitted with two beds, some chairs, a table, and a small kitchen up front of the cart, toilet outside in an outhouse. The right side of the cart was almost all windows, lots of 15 by 15 centimeter windows making up most of the wall, facing out onto the rest of the grandmother's land. The two beds that me and my dad slept on were placed in a 90 degree angle, one bed up against the back wall of the cart and the other bed up against the window wall. Be nighttime, both sleeping, dad on back wall, me on window wall. Have nightmare. The nightmare is just a still shot of the dirt road out front of the cart, like a camera fixed in the air filming the road. In the nightmare, a disembodied woman's voice is whispering. I can't make out what she says. Suddenly, her voice becomes normal. Everything in nightmare goes quiet, and she says, then I died. Suddenly, like a tsunami, an explosion of water bombards the dirt road as a disembodied woman's voice screams a blood-curdling scream of absolute pure terror. Nightmare wakes me up, almost fly out of bed, heart pumping, panicking, look out in a train cart, only lit up by the moonlight coming through the window wall. See my dad sitting on a small crate in the middle of the cart, hunched over, with his arms resting on his legs. He's staring at the floor, with his jaw hanging loose, and his eyes wide open, as wide as you could possibly open your eyes. His eyes don't blink. He's just staring at the floor. What the fuck is going on, Dad JPEG? I say quietly, Dad? He slowly turns his head to me and looks me straight in the eyes with the most soulless stare I've ever seen. No response. Dad? What's going on? He slowly stands up and starts walking towards me. I start freaking out. Dad, what are you doing? Slowly walking towards me, he puts his arms out with his hands reaching towards me. Think my dad is about to kill me by strangulation in the woods, screaming for my life at the top of my lungs. All of a sudden, I see out of the corner of my eye, my dad flying out of his bed next to me. All of the screaming woke him up. Just as my dad wakes up, the dad in front of me becomes like mist or smoke, just vanishes. For a second, I can see the residue of the mist in the room. My dad himself panicking, asking, What's wrong? Me, freaking out, thinking I was just about to die, trying frantically to tell him what happened. He calms me down, and a while later, we go back to sleep. The cart was removed a few years later, and the land sold. I don't know if it was an actual ghost or what, but it was the most scared I've ever been in my life. Another worker to be trained. This one, I swear, is a serial killer unclean dude who smells like metal and feces. End up hiring him for God knows what reason. Comes in late, out of uniform, every time. Desperate for workers at this point, so let it slide. Working an earlier shift, suddenly, code brown. Oh God, what the fuck now, Dot JPEG? New dudes being held at gunpoint by another dude. Police come in, both are tackled and arrested. Filing out paperwork regarding the situation, Find out he had rifles, knives, and poetry about murdering everyone in the world. Lincoln Park intensifies. Go to the station after I learned he also had a list of people to kill. My name is fifth in the list, and I knew the guy for a week. Commit suicide a few days later in jail. Now to ghost stories. Can't really green text this one, so. There's a story around my store that a guy got his head chopped off while operating one of the machines in the back room, and that you can hear the gruesome incident late at night, exactly at 1.33 a.m. Be working late again, as always. Organizing back room, making sure it's ready for the morning friends. Moving pasta, when suddenly, I hear the power equipment operating. I am one of the two who are legally allowed to use it, aside from my manager, who left at seven when I came into work. Sounds are loud. Sounds like the equipment is struggling with something. Get shivers. Look around behind me. Both the power jack and the thing we use to put pallets high up are there. Maximum wet. Go around the corner. 
and see a man with no head standing there. Absolutely, literally shit myself. I mean, I did. I actually defecated in my pants. Walk away slowly. Sound gets louder. Like bones in a grinder. That kind of sound. Sprint to management and tell them that I am super duper sick and I need to go home. Spend three days drinking two liters of vodka and praying to Christ I never die like that. 